Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States. And you may have noticed something peculiar looking about that flag that you couldn't quite put a finger on. Well, the problem with that flag, why it looks different, is because it has 15 stripes instead of the normal 13, but it's also got only 15 stars instead of the normal 50. Well, the reason for that is, is because that is the flag that was flying in 1814 when our national anthem was written during the bombardment of Fort Henry in Baltimore. But we're not in Baltimore, we're in Washington, D.C. at Francis Scott Key Park. Now, right on the corner of 34th and M on the banks of the Potomac River, and this park is a, a shrine, if you will, a monument to Francis Scott Key, the author of the lyrics to the national anthem, The Star Spangled Banner, that was written in 1814, and he witnessed the bombardment of Fort McHenry defending Baltimore Harbor. Now, there's various reports that he was inspired by watching this because he was actually held prisoner, so to speak. He, he sailed out to the British Armada, if you will, the British ships, under a uh, flag of truce to try and negotiate the freedom of, of prisoner exchange, essentially. And uh, they held him during the bombardment because they figured he knew what was going on and they didn't want information to leak back to the enemy. So he got to see it from on board the British ships that were actually bombarding the fort. Well, anyway, later in life, in 1805, Key bought a house directly adjacent to the property we're now standing on. And he lived there for 25 years, from 1805 to 1830, here in the Georgetown neighborhood in the northwest corner of Washington, D.C. He was an attorney. He was an amateur poet, but he was by trade an attorney. So that's why he was here in Washington, D.C. So amongst the many features here in Francis Scott Key Park, a large stone marker designating it's the Star Spangled Banner Memorial Park, is this beautiful bronze bust of Key himself. Now, this was the work of sculptor Betty Mailhouse Dunstan, and I really don't have any more information about her. Um, uh, if the internet is to be believed, uh, she's 93 years old now. Uh, I don't know how old she was at the time that this was done, um, but it's a beautiful bronze statue. The base actually just appears to be an oval piece of cut stone, but it's a gorgeous view of him at about the time, the age he would have been when the Star Spangled Banner was written. Fairly young man at the time, but a practicing attorney. He practiced law in Frederick, Maryland, which is, I don't know, about 30 or 40 miles north of here, uh, up in, in, in northern part of Maryland. And uh, actually, there are pictures of his uh, offices. Let me see if I can find that. I'll put it up here now. And that's the office where he worked until he moved here to Washington, D.C. So Scott was actually nominated to be U.S. Attorney by Andrew Jackson in, uh, and he served from 1833 to 1841 as the U.S. Attorney, another reason he was here in D.C. Uh, he passed away then two years later in 1843. <laughs> so. That's the bit, but I mean, the, the thing is, is that what he's known for best is writing uh, the poem in defense of Fort McHenry, which became the lyrics to the national anthem, which was, incidentally, first sung in public in 1814 at 601 Pennsylvania Avenue. And here you go, there's a plaque at 601 Pennsylvania Avenue, made out of solid bronze, 
designating that as the official place that the national anthem was first performed in public. So the park itself here, really a nice setting, people can come and sit. It's difficult to get to unless you live in the neighborhood. We got here by, via bus uh, because there's no parking. You've got to come in, we came in on the train and then picked up the bus and then came down here by bus. But it's a beautiful setting. There are these semicircular uh, arches, uh, like a pergola, and then a beautiful stairway that goes down. This is on the side of a hill with all these, these gardens and all this beautiful greenery, in the, certainly in the summer. And then at the bottom of the hill is, uh, well, there's actually the V&O Canal, but beyond that is the actual Potomac River, okay? I don't know why I said actual, but it's the Potomac River. I think the reason is because you've got this, via, this piece of the V&O Canal, which is another historic thing that we'll cover at some point in the future, just at the base of the park, but it's not really significant to, to this episode. And then they have, additionally, the all around the outside, it's a circular area. They have these plaques talking about Key and the events around his life. So very, very cool. Here it talks about his, uh, his lifespan, 1779 to 1843. That was his lifespan and the significant events. So it's a very informative sort of a park too. So it's not just beautiful and relaxing, but it's also very informative and it's just a gorgeous place. Well, so hey, we gotta, I, gotta, I gotta point this out. Behind the placard here, Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, it's the day before Thanksgiving, and these beautiful roses are still in bloom. And I'm taking a chance on this because I could probably rip my hand open on these uh, thorns. These are beautiful rose bushes, and they're still in bloom. You see the rose hips uh, from where the blooms were that have fallen off. And uh, they're all down this hill that stretches out towards the Potomac. So really, really beautiful setting, even this late in the year. And uh, along the column, some of the columns by the, the pergola are these, these, what appear to be very ancient vines that are all twisted and go up and make a canopy on the top of this beautiful park. So. Anyway, folks, that is, I've been trying for three years to get here, but I could never find parking. And now, after all this time, finally, finally, we get back to our friend Francis Scott Key after all this time. I could see pictures of it on the internet, I could see where it was on the map, but I could never get here. And so I'm actually really quite happy. Um, he obviously, I think, quite a handsome man and uh, in his youth. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, what do you think? Leave me a comment down below. So thanks so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this short visit. By the way, to get here from the Virginia side, you cross a bridge, which is one of two bridges called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. There's one in Baltimore dedicated to him, and there's one here dedicated to him as well, because he spent such a big portion of his life living in the house right next door to where this is. It's now since gone. It was torn down in 1947, actually. But because of that, because he spent such a huge period of his life here, the bridge coming right over, right over here, next to us, is the Key Bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So, just a tidbit I thought was interesting. I hope you enjoyed the short visit to the Francis Scott Key Park Memorial Park here in Washington, D.C., in the Georgetown neighborhood. It's beautiful. If you get a chance, get on a bus and come here. Don't try and find a place to park. But come and see this in, in real life. It's just beautiful. Thanks so much for joining us. Please, if you got questions, comments, 
Leave the comment section down below. You just want to say hi, that's good too. I love it when people just want to say hi. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, hey, fix, subscribe, and come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching.